About three years ago, late 2021, we were all heading into an episode of inflation, unlike anything since I was in kindergarten. And I wondered, in my job now, writing about economics for the Minneapolis Fed, what do we know about how inflation affects different people or groups differently? There were some fascinating research papers for me to write about, but in general, the answer was, we did not know much. In particular, there was no broad or official data. There were different flavors of price indexes, but those were about taking categories of stuff in or out of the basket. Not so much about the different types of consumers on the other end. But the highest inflation in 40 years inspired economists at places like the Bureau of Labor Statistics and the New York Fed to fill that gap. And today we have the fruits of their labors. Let's start with the BLS and their research series of CPI by income. They use survey data to determine goods and services shopping baskets for American households by income quintiles. They take their data back almost 19 years. In that time, prices for the lowest income group have risen 64%, about seven percentage points more than the richest. Is that a lot? Is that a little? Opinions will vary, but it is definitely there. Over time, lower income equals higher inflation. On top of this, it stands to reason that low income shoppers have less power to substitute and save money. Let's say, for example, you're already buying the least expensive brand. Where are you gonna go? And another research data series from the BLS bears this out. When they estimate people's ability to substitute, everyone's inflation goes down, but the gaps between the richest and the poorest get wider. Let's look at another newish data set. This one is from the New York Fed. It goes back to 2019, and it shows how the title of worst inflation changed hands after the pandemic. As inflation first ramped up, low-income families had it worst. Prices for necessities, you might recall, like toilet paper, stayed high, but prices for travel, entertainment, and luxury goods dipped in the face of shutdowns and layoffs. Then came the war in Ukraine and ongoing global supply chain crunches. Prices rocketed up for things that figure relatively big in the middle-income pocketbook, especially gas and cars. The bottom 40% of households actually had the lowest inflation here for a little while. But as transportation costs normalized, rent and other shelter expenses kept rising. And housing is a bigger proportion of low-income budgets. So those households are again experiencing the highest inflation. Meanwhile, at the peak of the surge in prices, the New York Fed's high-income inflation indicator was a full percentage point below low-income households, and it's barely poked above average this entire time. I enjoy learning about this stuff. Fortunately, I also enjoy Raisin Bran. If you do too, you got to check out the rest of this article at MinneapolisFed.org. And I'll see you next time we pull some fascinating data out of the basket.